Hi everyone, it's Michelle again talking about sustainability and I thought I'd um, put together a little video in the run up to COP26 uh, just to explore some of the issues around it and what is likely to come out of it and what we should be doing now to kind of influence um, the direction of travel. So first up, what is kind of COP? Okay, so COP is conference of parties, it's the great and the good of the world coming together to look at the different um, challenges and issues. There are multiple lobbying organisations there from the polluting industries to activist groups um, and this is also supposed to be um, very democratic and therefore all the nations are represented so hopefully trying to achieve things that everybody can get on board with. Um, this COP26 is hosted by the UK, it comes hot off the heels of the latest IPCC report which um, was giving us stark warnings um, to where we need to be. So drastic cuts in carbon emissions and their equivalent to ensure that we're staying um, underneath the two degrees now. So the Paris Agreement was looking at one and a half. We spiked past that um, in certain places, 1.6. Um, so we are now really at you know a pivotal moment in this kind of climate challenge crisis emergency that we are facing um, to have the traction to actually change the potential outcomes and influence how our planet is actually working. Um, so what might this mean for actual uh, policies and the different things that are coming out or from the COP. So um, you can see from this uh, slide, this is really looking at where we need to be in terms of drastic level um, carbon emissions to get to net zero by 2050. So this is the green line at the bottom and that is a you know downward trajectory business as usual and other things are taking us up to you know really significant amount of um, CO2 which our planet just won't be able to sustain the life it does at the moment. Um, and now net zero importantly as to be considered as uh, properly taking carbon emissions away and drastically reducing them and moving much of our processes, much of our um, manufacturing to uh, electrical based um, where we can build that from renewable technology. Now, you know, the policy changes that are likely to come out um, should be looking at things like um, carbon markets and how those are developed in a fair and just way across the globe, um, how economic policies can be changed and how we can bring the economy as a kind of uh, consumerist basis at the moment to something which is more aligned uh, within planetary boundaries, more on that in a minute. Um, and also then ensuring that how we're actually delivering these significant structural changes, um, how that's going to be done in a uh, just and fair transition. So the most amount of impacts at the moment from climate change, for example, are going to be felt in the countries who are doing, have done historically the least amount of carbon emissions. So that needs to be considered and there could potentially be a raft of policies around that. Um, now this will include some new economic uh, modelling and we need to be thinking about how our economy can fit within this better way of thinking. So instead of that, uh, the economy given equal weight, the economy needs to sit within society and the society then sits within the environment. Um, so the Global Green New Deal, this is um, on the cards and this is very much looking at the opportunities for retrofitting our urban areas and delivering better agricultural solutions protecting and our environment and how this will actually bring growth and jobs and new technologies in different sectors. Um, there is also uh, the donut economic theory and um, we are living in this kind of outside ring, the overshoot area. So how to actually contract our economies and to distribute them in ways that brings our um, our monies and everything into more of this donut shape. So we're actually living within a capacity that can function with the world. Um, and, you know, that lo is looking at kind of more localised economic systems um, and how we can actually reduce our global impacts. Um, 
And then finally, we also have um, now talk about degrowth and what degrowth policies might actually look at. And there's some really interesting economic thinking around that. And some of that is um, around how we're actually reducing consumption by removing advertising, for example, um, and also looking at existing um, financial mechanisms and how they might be um, changed by for example, blockchain chain technology, how that might implement new technolog technological advances in the um, developing world, which is, have less of an impact on the environment than how we have historically developed in the West. So there's some there's some fascinating stuff out there. Um, in, in all honesty, it's likely to be a whole range of economic policies from all of these different models that is likely to be taken forward. Um, and this is because, you know, no, there's not going to be one size fits all in different areas. So it's going to be different local areas um, and how obviously regional, etc. So, you know, you're an organisation, you're an individual, you're a business. What can you do in the run up to COP26? How can you take action? So for everybody out there, make your voice heard. Write to your democratically elected um, representative, your local MP. Talk to them about how you think that climate action needs to be prioritised and what that should mean for yourself. This is highly important. You know, the politics is driven by people. So if we want our voices heard, we do it in this way. We talk and we say what our opinions are. Um, and the politicians do listen. If you're a business or an organisation, why don't you think about sitting down and declaring a climate emergency? And... Um, this can be done in lots of different ways, in very collaborative ways that bring all of your staff on board. Um, you could sit down at events like this and have really, you know, exciting discussions and information around um, what the climate emergency would mean for your business and how that would need, what potentially, you, how you could change in the future. And there could be some really dynamic ideas and innovations. This was from the UK Climate um, Citizens Assembly and that was super successful and government is look looking at that. And then also it's worth, um, I just wanted to leave you with this um, picture here, which was from the Ock Glacier in Iceland. And this was a couple of years ago that Iceland, um, the government held a funeral for the glacier because it has disappeared completely. It can no longer be classed as glacier. And what that might mean for the future and whether we actually have the tenacity and the willpower and the commitment to achieve um, the, you know, the necessary changes that could be really fantastic for society and the environment, but potentially have, you know, different impacts on our economy and the way we think about what we actually value in life. Um, and just one final thing to think about and take away. Uh, it can be really overwhelming. It can feel really difficult, highly complex. Um, all the different challenges are m linked together in um, a myriad of ways. And often it thinks, oh, what, you know, what is the point of doing X in my work life? Um, and I was lucky enough to spend an evening with Satish Kumar, um, the great glo global peace advocate. And he was saying that all of our actions are important as everything that we're actually doing is not done on a solely individual basis or an organisational basis. It is part of a much greater awareness and action taking across um, the planet that is happening at the moment. So our actions collectively are becoming, you know, the tributaries of the river and the river will become the ocean. So if you're starting to implement these things, if you're starting to give your employees a voice, talk about the climate emergency, reconsider how your business is actually practicing, reconsider what the what organization, um, how it might need to change to actually un work within the parameters that are forthcoming, um, then you'll be taking really good steps and positive steps to uh, actually changing and improving our environmental outcome and you know limiting the effects of um, catastrophic climate change so i hope this has been useful i hope um you feel motivated and um can feel positive about you know undertaking some of these changes if you want to get involved more come and find me on patreon and otherwise i'll speak to you soon bye